Welcome to the Deep Dive. Today we're diving into one of America's oldest mysteries, the lost colony of Roanoke. It's a story about yeah. a, a whole group of people just vanishing seemingly into thin air. Over a hundred English settlers just gone. Yeah, over a hundred men, women, and children just poof, disappeared. Leaving behind only a handful of clues. Right, just a whisper of what might have happened to them. So the big question is, yeah. what happened to them? Exactly, and where do they go? We're going to try to unravel this centuries-old mystery. We're going to be looking at historical records, archaeological findings, and some of the theories that have been proposed over the years. All to figure out what might have happened to those colonists back in the late 16th century. Yeah, because it all started back in 1587. 1587, that's a long time ago. Yeah, over 100 English settlers landed on Roanoke Island. With big dreams, right? Absolutely, hoping to establish the first permanent English settlement in the New World. This is a huge deal. Oh yeah, a bold move by England. A whole new world full of possibilities and dangers, of course. And among those settlers was... A very special little girl. Was Virginia Dare the first English child born in the Americas? Oh, wow. So there were families there trying to build a new life for themselves. It must have been so exciting, but also terrifying to be so far from home in a completely new environment. Right. I mean, can you imagine leaving everything, you know, behind to start over in a completely uncharted territory? Especially with a newborn baby. Yeah. Talk about a wild adventure. It wasn't all smooth sailing, though. Yeah. It sounds like they faced quite a few challenges. They did. Finding enough food, dealing with unfamiliar weather, navigating relationships with the Native American tribes that were already there. I mean, it couldn't have been easy being a pioneer in those days. But they had a leader, a man named John White. John White, the governor of the colony. Right. And not only was he the governor, mm. his daughter and newborn granddaughter, Virginia Dare, were among the settlers. So he had a personal stake in the success of the colony, too. Oh, absolutely. His family was right there with him, facing all those same challenges. So what happened? Why do we call it the Lost Colony? Well, things took a pretty dramatic turn when Governor White had to return to England. He had to leave his family behind. Yeah, he had to go back for supplies. Supplies that the colony desperately needed. He planned to be back in a few months, but as you know... Uh-oh, I sense trouble brewing. The timing couldn't have been worse. Oh. War broke out between England and Spain. Oh, no. Yeah, and this delayed his return? For how long? <laughs> for three long years. Three years. Can you imagine being one of the colonists back on Roanoke waiting for White's return? I mean, three years is an eternity. It must have felt like an eternity not knowing what was happening back in England or if help was ever going to arrive. So much worry and uncertainty they must have felt. And when John White finally returned in 1590, what he found was chilling. Okay, lay on me. What did he find? The settlement was deserted. Oh, no. Houses were dismantled. Belongings were scattered. There was no sign of the colonists he had left behind. They just vanished. Like, completely gone without a trace. Well, not quite. There mm -hmm. was one clue. One clue. Okay, tell me. A word carved into a wooden post. A message. You could say that the word was Croatoan. Croatoan. That sounds ominous. What did they think it meant? Actually, it was a glimmer of hope. Oh, okay. White knew that Croatoan was the name of a nearby island. Okay. And home to a friendly Native American tribe. Mm. So his initial thought was that the colonists may have relocated there for safety or maybe to seek an alliance with the Croatoans. Okay, that makes sense. I mean, if they were facing danger or hardship, it would be logical to seek help from a friendly tribe. And this also raises questions about the relationship between the colonists and the Native American tribes in general. Yeah. Were they allies? Were they rivals? A little bit of both, maybe. It's a fascinating piece of the puzzle, for sure. It is. <laughs> Unfortunately, though, storms prevented White from reaching Croatoan Island to investigate. Oh, no. He was forced to return to England. Leaving the fate of the colonists unknown. Exactly. And that marked the beginning of the enduring mystery of the lost colony of Roanoke. It's like something straight out of a history thriller. More than 400 years later, what do we think happened? Well, there are a lot of theories, some more plausible than others. Like what? Some believe that the colonists were attacked by hostile Native American tribes. Okay. Others suggest they tried to sail back to England and perished at sea. Hmm. And some even propose that they integrated with a Native tribe. Wow. And that their descendants might live on today. <laughs> that last one is mind-blowing. It is. It's a fascinating possibility that has fueled a lot of modern research using things like DNA analysis to search for those connections. Wow. So we've got attacks, hostile tribes... Shipwrecks assimilation. Mm. I mean, the possibilities are pretty wide open. 
They are. But for centuries, people assumed they knew exactly where the Roanoke colony was located. Okay, so where was it? On Roanoke Island, of course. Okay, so what's changed? Why are we questioning that now? Well, remember those challenges the colonists faced? Yeah, like finding food, dealing with the elements. One of the biggest challenges was the environment itself. In particular, the constantly shifting coastline. Shifting coastline. What was once dry land 400 years ago could now be underwater. Oh, wow. So they might have been looking in the wrong place all along. Exactly. In recent years, researchers have started looking below the waves, and they've made some interesting discoveries. Like what, sunken treasure pirate ships? Haha, <laughs> no, not quite. Right. But they did find pieces of pottery. Oh, wow. That date back to the 16th century. Wow. Matching the style and time period of the Roanoke colony. So it's like a tiny whisper from the past. It is, suggesting that the colony's true location might have been further east than originally thought. Further east. Yeah, possibly submerged beneath the waves. Fascinating. So if the colony wasn't where everyone thought it was, where did they go? Well, that's where it gets even more intriguing. There's a place called Site X. Site X sounds mysterious. It is. It's a fort marked on a secret part of John White's map. A secret fort. Now we're talking. Tucked away along a body of water called the Albemarle Sound. Could this be where some of the colonists went? Let's dive into that. Excavations at Site X have turned up more English pottery from the right time period. Okay, so that's promising. It is, but there's a catch. Similar pottery was actually pretty common back in England. Hmm. So it's hard to say for sure if these fragments belong to the Roanoke colonists. So it's a clue, but not a slam dunk. Right. And also, that area was known for having some less than friendly native tribes. Oh, yeah. Didn't White have some run-ins with hostile tribes in that region during a previous expedition? He did. So it makes you wonder if the colonists would have risked settling in such a dangerous area. Yeah, that doesn't sound like a good idea. Especially considering they were already facing so many challenges. Okay, so if Site X isn't the answer, what about that Croatone carving? Didn't that point to a different location? It did. And that brings us to Hatteras Island, about 50 miles south of Roanoke. This is where historian Scott Dawson believes the colonists may have relocated. To live with the friendly Croatoan tribe. Right. Okay, now this sounds promising. What kind of evidence did he find? Dawson and his team discovered a longhouse on Hatteras Island that contained some pretty interesting artifacts. Like what? Well, they found a sword, a gun, German stoneware, a copper ring, even a Nuremberg token. Wow, those are definitely not things that Native Americans would typically have. Right, these were definitely European items. So it sounds like Europeans were definitely living there. Exactly. And there's one discovery that's particularly exciting. They found a small copper artifact. Copper? And they tested it for traces of arsenic. Arsenic? Why arsenic? Because copper from England during that time period often contained arsenic. Oh, interesting. So if this copper had arsenic, it would be a strong link to the Roanoke colonists. Exactly. And guess what? They found arsenic. They did. The test results came back positive. The copper contained arsenic. Wow. That's pretty compelling evidence. It seems increasingly likely that at least some of the Roanoke colonists found refuge with the Croatoan tribe on Hatteras Island. It's a strong possibility. But what about the colonists themselves? Did any of them actually survive? That's the ultimate question, isn't it? Yeah, it is, and that's what the Lost Colony DNA Project led by Roberta Estes is trying to answer. The Lost Colony DNA Project? What's that all about? They're using modern technology to search for living descendants of the Roanoke colonists. Wait, they can do that? How does that even work? They focus on Y-chromosome DNA, which is passed down through the male line. Okay, I'm following. So how do they know what to look for? Well, they have historical records of the men who were part of the Roanoke colony, yeah. and from those records, they can identify specific surnames okay. that were common among the colonists. Got it. And then they look for those same surnames in present-day populations. So if they find someone with a surname that matches one of the Roanoke colonists, they test their DNA to see if there's a genetic link. Exactly. It's like solving a giant puzzle. They're comparing the DNA of potential descendants to the DNA of known ancestors, right. trying to find those genetic connections that span centuries. And have they found any matches? They have. One really interesting case involves a man named Mr. Brown who lives in North Carolina. Mr. Brown. His surname matches two of the Roanoke colonists. Two of them? Wow. And his DNA test results show a match with other brown men who have been confirmed as descendants of those colonists. Wow, that's amazing. It's like a direct link to the past. 
proof that the bloodline of the Roanoke colonists might still be flowing today. It's pretty incredible, right? Absolutely. Yeah. So we've got possible relocation sites, intriguing artifacts, DNA research. Yeah. It's like we're slowly piecing together the story of the lost colony. We are. And we've only just scratched the surface. Okay, so let's pause here for a moment. We've covered a lot of ground from the colonists' arrival to their mysterious disappearance, the search for their lost settlement, and the possibility that they integrated with the Croatoans. Yeah, it's a lot to take in. It is. But this is just the beginning of our deep dive. We've got more theories to explore, more evidence to uncover, and maybe even some answers to this centuries-old enigma. We'll delve deeper into the DNA research and consider what it might reveal about the colonists' fate. We'll also explore the broader historical context the ambitions, the rivalries, and the clash of cultures that shaped this pivotal chapter in American history. So stay tuned. We'll be back in a flash to continue our deep dives into the lost colony of Roanoke. Welcome back to our deep dive into the mystery of the lost colony of Roanoke. You know, it's amazing to think that even after more than 400 years, we're still piecing together clues right. and trying to understand what happened to those colonists. It really is. It's a testament to how history can continue to intrigue and challenge us. For sure. And the more we learn, the more questions we seem to have. Absolutely. Like we've been talking a lot about the Croatoan tribe, and it seems like they played a significant role in the story. Yeah. Maybe even offering a safe haven for the colonists. But what do we actually know about them? Well, the Croatoan were part of a larger group of Native American tribes that lived in the coastal regions of what is now North Carolina. Okay. Um, they were skilled fishermen, hunters, and farmers. Hmm. And they had a deep understanding of the land and its resources. So they were already thriving in this environment when the English colonists arrived. Yeah. I imagine that must have made them valuable allies. Yeah. Especially for a group of newcomers struggling to survive. Exactly. And historical records actually suggest that the Croatoan were relatively friendly toward the English. Oh, really? Yeah. In fact, during one of his earlier visits to Roanoke, hmm. John White even met a Croatoan man who spoke English. Wow. Really? That's incredible. It suggests that there was at least some interaction. Yeah. And perhaps even some level of trust between the two groups before the colony was even established. It does. And it makes you wonder how much the colonists relied on the Croatoan for knowledge and support. Right. Remember, they were facing all those challenges, yeah. like finding food, navigating an unfamiliar environment. It's quite possible that the Croatoan played a crucial role in helping them adapt and survive. So if the colonists did end up relocating to Hatteras Island to live among the Croatoan, what do we think their lives might have been like? It's fascinating to consider... Imagine a community where English and Native American traditions blended together. Right. Where people from different cultures learned from each other and adapted to a new way of life. Right. It's like a lost chapter in American history. Yeah. A story of cultural exchange and maybe even emerging of identities. And that's why the DNA research is so important. Okay. It could help us uncover those hidden connections, those family histories that have been lost to time. Okay, so let's talk more about that DNA research. Mm -hmm. Earlier you mentioned that scientists are looking for specific genetic markers. Right. Can you explain that a little bit more? What yeah. exactly are they looking for? They're focusing on Y chromosome DNA, which is passed down from father to son. Okay. Think of it like a genetic fingerprint that can be traced back through generations. Okay, I'm following. So how do they know what genetic markers to look for? Well, they have historical records of the men who were part of the Roanoke colony. Right. And from those records, they can identify specific surnames that were common among the colonists. Then they look for those same surnames in present day populations. So if they find someone with a surname that matches one of the Roanoke colonists, they test their DNA to see if there's a genetic link. Exactly. It's like solving a giant puzzle. They're comparing the DNA of potential descendants to the DNA of known ancestors trying to find those genetic connections that span centuries. And have they found any matches? They have. There's one particularly compelling case that involves a man named Mr. Brown who lives in North Carolina. Mr. Brown, okay. His surname matches two of the Roanoke colonists. Two of them. Wow. And his DNA test results showed a match with other brown men who have been confirmed as descendants of those colonists. Wow, that's amazing. It's like a direct link to the past. Proof that the bloodline of the Roanoke colonists might still be flowing today. It's pretty incredible. Are there other people out there who could be descendants? Yeah, are there. Roberta Estes, who leads the DNA project, believes there could be thousands more descendants waiting to be discovered. And each new match brings us closer to understanding what happened to the colonists and how their story might have continued beyond the mystery of their disappearance. 
This is all so incredibly fascinating. It makes you realize that history isn't just about dates and events in a textbook. Right. It's about real people and their lives and how those lives are connected to our own in ways we may never fully comprehend. Exactly. And in the case of the Lost Colony of Roanoke, those connections might be more tangible than we ever imagined. It's like we're unraveling a mystery that has implications for who we are today. It's like holding a mirror up to the past and seeing reflections of ourselves in ways we never expected. But let's shift gears for a moment and talk about the bigger picture, the historical context surrounding the Roanoke colony. Okay. Remember, this was a time of intense rivalry between European powers yeah. vying for control of the New World. Right. England, under the reign of Queen Elizabeth, I was eager to establish its presence in North America. The Roanoke colony was a strategic move, a way to challenge the dominance of Spain, which had already established colonies in the Caribbean and parts of South America. But it wasn't just about finding new lands and opportunities. Yeah. It was also about power, prestige, and national pride. Precisely. And that rivalry played a significant role in the fate of the Roanoke colony. Remember, it was the war with Spain, the need to combat the Spanish Armada, that delayed John White's return to Roanoke for those crucial three years. Right. Those three years changed everything. They did. The colonists were left vulnerable and isolated, forced to make difficult decisions about how to survive. And those decisions, those adaptations, those relationships with the native tribes ultimately shaped their destiny. Mm. We may never know precisely what happened to them, yeah. but we can try to understand the historical forces that influenced their lives and the choices they made. It's like we're piecing together a puzzle with some pieces missing, Yeah. trying to fill in the gaps and make sense of a story that's been shrouded in mystery for centuries. Mm. And that's what makes this deep dive so compelling. It's not just about finding answers, it's about the journey of discovery. Right. The thrill of uncovering new clues and the realization that history is a dynamic and evolving field full of surprises and unexpected twists. Okay, so we've explored the possible relocation sites, the intriguing artifacts, the DNA research, and the historical context. Mm. But I'm curious, are there any other theories about what might have happened to the colonists? Um, any left conventional explanations that historians have considered? There have been some truly intriguing and sometimes outlandish theories proposed over the years. Like what? For instance, some speculate that the colonists might have encountered a group of escaped convicts from a Spanish ship that had wrecked off the coast of North Carolina. Wait, escaped convicts? So instead of hostile natives, yeah. it was a band of rogue Europeans who might have clashed with the colonists. Exactly. It's a bit far-fetched, but it highlights how the lack of definitive evidence has fueled speculation and imaginative interpretations of the events. That's wild. And what about natural disasters? Could the colonists have been wiped out by a hurricane or some other catastrophic event? It's certainly possible. The Outer Banks are known for their volatile weather pattern. Right. And a powerful storm could have easily destroyed the colony and left little trace behind. It's a chilling thought. The idea that nature itself might have played a role in their disappearance. Yeah. And it adds another layer of complexity to the mystery, doesn't it? It does. We're not just dealing with human actions and decisions. We're also grappling with the unpredictable forces of the natural world. Exactly. It's a reminder that history is often shaped by a confluence of factors, both human and environmental, hmm. and that sometimes the most compelling stories are those that defy easy explanation. It's like we're trying to solve a puzzle with some pieces missing, and we may never have all the answers. Uh. But the search itself, right. the process of piecing together the fragments of evidence, is what keeps the story alive. Mm, precisely. And that's what makes the Roanoke mystery so enduring. It's a puzzle with missing pieces, a story with open endings, a reminder that history is not always neat and tidy. And perhaps that's the most important lesson we can take away from this deep dive. Yeah. The realization that history is a continuous process of discovery, interpretation, and reinterpretation. The search for the lost colony of Roanoke isn't about finding a single definitive answer. It's about embracing the ambiguity, the complexity, and the enduring power of the past to fascinate and inspire us. So even though the Roanoke colony vanished from the historical record, their story might not be truly lost. The DNA research, the archaeological discoveries, and the ongoing efforts of dedicated historians and scientists offer hope that we might one day piece together a more complete understanding of their fate. Beautifully put. And that's what makes history so captivating, isn't it? It's a never-ending journey of discovery full of twists, turns, and unexpected revelations. Well, unfortunately, that's all the time we have for today's deep dive. But don't worry, this isn't the end of our exploration. 
We'll be back next time with part three, where we'll delve into the lasting impact of the lost colony of Roanoke and consider what it tells us about the nature of history itself. So stay tuned. Welcome back to the deep dive. We've been on quite a journey exploring the lost colony of Roanoke, haven't we? We have. It's amazing how a mystery from over 400 years ago can still capture our imaginations and leave us wanting more. It really is. It's a testament to the power of the unknown. Yeah. The lost colony of Roanoke is like a puzzle with missing pieces. Right. And it seems like every time we find a new piece, it just creates more questions. Right. Like we've explored the possible relocation sites, the intriguing artifacts, the DNA research, and even some outlandish theories. Yeah. But the definitive answer to what happened to those colonists remains elusive. It really does. It's like this mystery has become woven into the very fabric of American history. Absolutely. It's a story that has been passed down through generations. Right. Inspiring countless books, plays, songs, even operas. Wow. And I think the fact that there is no single conclusive answer has only added to its allure. It's like a blank canvas that allows each generation to fill in the gaps with their own interpretations and imaginations. Exactly. And in a way, that makes it a very personal story mm. because it allows us to connect with the past on an emotional level, to wonder what we would have done in those circumstances, and to grapple with the same questions that have puzzled people for centuries. So even though the Roanoke colonists vanished without a trace, their story continues to resonate with us today. Mm. But I'm curious, what about the legacy of the lost colony? Really? How has this mystery shaped our understanding of American history and what lessons can we draw from it today? Well, on a practical level, the Roanoke experience provided valuable lessons for future English colonists. Mm. They learned the importance of careful planning, bringing adequate supplies, and establishing strong relationships with the Native American tribes who already lived in the land. Like a cautionary tale. Yeah. Highlighting the challenges and potential pitfalls of venturing into unknown territories and the need to be prepared for the unexpected. Exactly. But beyond the practical lessons, the lost colony also serves as a powerful symbol of the complexities okay. and sometimes tragic consequences of colonization. It forces us to confront the darker aspects of history. Right. The displacement of indigenous populations, the exploitation of resources, and the violence that often accompanied European expansion. It's a reminder that history is not always a straightforward narrative of progress and triumph. It's a reminder that history is often messy, ambiguous, and filled with unintended consequences. Yeah. And that understanding the past, even the difficult parts, is essential for navigating the present and building a more just and equitable future. That's a powerful insight. And it makes me think about the ongoing efforts to learn more about the lost colony through DNA research and archaeological excavations. Yeah. We're still trying to piece together the story to understand what happened to those colonists and to acknowledge their place in history. And that search for understanding, that willingness to grapple with the complexities of the past is what makes history so relevant to our lives today. Mm. It's not just about memorizing dates and names. It's about connecting with the human stories that shaped our world. And in the case of the lost colony of Roanoke, it's about recognizing the contributions and the struggles of those who came before us, both the colonists and the Native Americans who already called this land their home. It's a story that challenges us to examine our own assumptions, yeah. to question the narratives we've inherited, and to approach history with a critical and discerning eye. So as we wrap up our deep dive into the lost colony of Roanoke, I think it's fitting to leave our listeners with a final thought-provoking question to ponder. Okay. If the colonists did indeed integrate with native tribes, as some evidence suggests, right. and their descendants live on today unaware of their unique connection to this historical mystery, what does that tell us about the interwoven nature of history identity and the stories we tell ourselves about the past? It's a question that invites us to reflect on the enduring legacy of the Roanoke colony, yeah. the mysteries that still linger, and the ways in which the past continues to shape our present. It's a reminder that history is not something that happened long ago and far away. Right. It's alive and well-woven into the fabric of our lives, waiting to be discovered and understood. Well, that's all the time we have for today, but thank you for joining us on this deep dive into the lost colony of Roanoke. Thanks for having me. We encourage you to continue exploring this captivating mystery and to keep questioning, keep searching, and keep uncovering the hidden stories that lie beneath the surface of history. Until next time, keep exploring.